Happy Wednesday, folks. Welcome back to the SIG Podcast, Recruits Draftcast. Today, we're going to be delving into some of the best defensive prospect pools currently in the NHL, according to Grant. We're also going to be looking at why fans need to be patient with their prospects, okay? They don't develop overnight. Patience is the key word here, folks. All right, so it all starts right now. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Recruits Draft Cast. And with the first overall selection in the 2023 NHL Draft, the Chicago Blackhawks are very proud to select from the Regina Pats, the Western Hockey League, Connor Bedard. The sickest NHL Draft and Scouting Podcast. It's going to be sick. As always, I am your host, producer Shane, joined by the magnificent Grant McCagg. Um, we're also going to be getting into, you know, the usual Habs prospect, riser of the week, um, performance of the week this time, and prospect of the week in just a moment. Um, as well, if you haven't seen it, Grant and I took over for Tony Marinero uh, <laughs> recently. He's in Florida, right? So we had a great show together. Go watch it if you haven't. But just go watch it after this one, though, okay? Stick around. Uh, but Grant, first and foremost, so a lot of people are excited about certain D prospects for a certain team, right? And you're going to get into it right now. But uh, in terms of wh which team has the best defensive prospect pool, give us your thoughts on that. Well, I uh, I started, I del delved into it yesterday. I started looking at all of the... Uh, what I consider to be the, the top under 23 defense cores in the league. Cause I mean, I was looking at Montreal's to start obviously, cause that's a team that we're covering uh, pretty closely right now. And uh, the, the under 23 group of defensemen for the Canadians runs at least 11 deep where uh, there's eight guys that I'd say are, are legitimate NHL prospects. Uh, whether Eight. they're already playing in the NHL or uh, the other guys, the other six are are uh, are all going to play in the NHL at the very least. And I, I wondered, you know, it, how does that stack up against the other top uh, defense groups that, under 23 in, in the league? And um, I had a look, a, a really solid look at it, and I came up with six teams that I think right now have the i mean it's a combination of depth and quality right you want you want both and um some teams it's more quality at, at the top like buffalo for instance i mean mm -hmm. you you have to uh power. you have to look at owen power power obviously and and uh, i judge him to be probably him and cider maybe right now are the are the top under 23 defensemen in the league um so i took a look at their uh their group uh darlene has graduated he's now 23 years old so he didn't make the cut now if you included 23 year old defensemen it, it would be hard not to argue with buffalo being right at, right at the top because of those two guys alone and ryan johnson's a good a good prospect as well but mm -hmm. uh their their depth when they got down to five six didn't compare with Montreal's or Anaheim's yeah. uh, especially uh, what I concluded. And I mean, it, it's just my opinion based on w w where you think these guys are going to be uh, over their careers. But uh, for me, the, the three defense groups under 23 right now that the potentially have the best uh, chance to, of being uh, uh, the best groups out of, out of the 32 teams are uh, are Montreal, Anaheim, and Detroit. Um, Makes sense. Columbus is a couple of years ago they they uh, they drafted Juracek and Matichuk, and they're two excellent prospects. But again, uh, similar to Buffalo, once you got past the the top two guys. Um, I mean, uh, if you look at Montreal's, and I think we could probably, uh, if, if if possible, put the list up just uh, so mm -hmm. I can kind of compare other these other ones. Now, 
you, you, Montreal's goes past too deep, right? I mean, Mayu, Gooley, Reinbacher, and Hudson. Um, fair to say that they all have top four uh, pairing to potential. Yeah. Um, even Jacki, Baron, Engstrom, and I'd say especially Engstrom, uh, all have all can be top, all could be top four defensemen. Uh, Jacki certainly looks like a consummate shutdown for, third pairing at the very least. He's already that. I mean, he just played his rookie year. Trudeau as well, uh, I think, can can be a uh, a third pairing defenseman in the NHL all day. Um, it just maybe might be a year away. Uh, Struble, another one that that has that potential. Kanyushkov, well, he's playing twenty three minutes a game right now mm -hmm. already in the uh, in the KHL as a twenty one year old. So certainly it's not unrealistic to think that someday he might be able to play a third pairing role in the nhl um so when you look at that group the the depth and the quality is not is not something that we've seen in montreal since uh <laughs> i i mean i i had to go back to uh the early 80s when the canadians uh had had a group under 21 that would have included uh Langway, Chelios, and Ludwig. Now, uh, those guys, um, you know, they they played between them four thousand games, um, <laughs> five J five Norris trophies, uh, five cups. So uh, that's mm -hmm. you know that's a pretty good group, right? But uh, if you looked at that list of the, of, uh, um, I mean, so Buffalo. And Columbus have two really solid, or you know, could be excellent uh, under twenty three defensemen. But after that, it, it the depth uh, just wasn't there. So they didn't uh, they didn't qualify for the for the last three. Now Detroit, that there's there's a group that you could argue along with Anaheim. I, I think it's those three defense groups that are the best in the league right now. Um, yeah. Now, can you say that about Montreal any time in the past 30 years? I don't think they they never had a had a group under 20 under 22 that was the best in the league. I mean, no. at one point, uh, um, Subban and, and Markov were uh, up and coming, but they again under 23. I don't know they weren't. Uh, there was enough of a spread there that they weren't really at the same time. Um, but again, even at that time, after after those two, there was there wasn't a lot of good young defensemen in, in the uh, system. So right now, the fact that there are eight to ten legitimate prospects on, on under the age of twenty three on Montreal's blue line, um, there's a couple of twenty three year olds that uh, that didn't make the list in Harris, you know, and. Uh, I mean, he he just turned twenty three, so you got to consider him young as well. Um, it's just the it's the most promising group of young defensemen in Montreal since since they had Chelios, Langway, and Ludwig. So that's mm -hmm. going back quite a piece. Um, uh, I mean, even uh, Desjardins, Schneider, uh, Brisebois, that wasn't a bad. It wasn't a bad group. It uh, I think it went about eight deep at that time, but again, uh, all things uh, we got to hope that at the end of the day, Reinbacher, Hudson, Mayu, and uh, uh, really? Gooley have more potential than that than that that group did at the time. As good as you know, Breezeball ended up being a solid NHL or Desjardins, very good very good NHL defenseman, but I think that quartet alone has more upside than, than that group ever did. So yeah, as far as I'm concerned, this is the best young uh, in quality and depth that Montreal has a, a under 23 or under 24 defense group that they've had since uh, the early 80s. So um, I think it, it bodes really well for the future for the Canadians on the blue line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean the depth. The depth is what stands out to me. Like it, it's scary 
how how deep it is and and obviously you know not every player will pan out and become an nhl player but as we speak today they have the potential to become nhl players which is insane to have that many um and and you mentioned other teams right anaheim uh new jersey all those teams have fantastic defense prospects but really I don't think anybody comes close to what the Habs have right now. It's it's remarkable, and they're going to build on that. Like, anyways, it's it's pretty special. Um, moving on. Yeah, to I, I forgot. Yeah. To, sorry, I forgot to mention uh, New Jersey. That was the other team that, again, Luke like Hughes, Nemec and Nemec. Hughes, right? Oh. Uh, but then it drops off. You know, you've got That's two it. elite. No depth. Exactly. Uh, I mean, they're, they're, Nemec and Hughes are are going to be top four all day, top four mm-hmm. defensemen. But then after that, Nikita Okutuk, I believe, is their next, you know. And, I mean, he's not a bad defense. I watched him in Ottawa for two or three years, but uh, 67s. Yeah. But, I mean, he's no Lane Hudson or uh, in potential or Ryan Bacher or Gooley or My- Mayu. By the way, I got confirmation from right from the source there. Uh, it's Mayu. Logan okay. Mayu, yeah, that's how he grew up. You know, uh, pronounce his name was pronounced, and that's how everybody pronounced it. Growing uh, for him, growing up, that's how the family uh, pronounces it. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, yeah. I, I mean, it's a, it's a, uh, I guess, a French name with a, with an Ontario, with an Ontario pronunciation. Like you know, just like uh, I don't know, Greg Gilbert, right? I mean, you, <laughs> you don't say Greg Gilbert, you know, no. and, and, and vice versa, Roderick Gilbert, you know, uh, great, uh, a great forward for the uh, Rangers back in the day, Rod Gilbert. It wasn't, wasn't Rod Gilbert. Right. So, mm-hmm. I mean, you go with, uh, you go with the pronunciation that, that, uh, they, they grew up, uh, um, with, uh, I mean, with the odd exception, like Reinbacher, obviously. Yeah, but he, he gave he gave the okay. He gave the okay. Uh, that was that yeah. was a spe- that was a funny moment there. Uh, yeah. And and you know we have to give flowers to Anaheim as well, who have who have depth, but not at the level of Montreal. Like okay, Zalweger, Drysdale, Mintikov, Tristan Luno, like they they have some solid D, but just it, like the, the list is not as long as Montreal's. It's close. Like they're, it is, it uh, it, it, if anything, it's 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 as close to a dead heat as could be. Because I mean, it goes down. Tyson Hines, um, J- Jackson Lacombe, who was a first round pick, uh, Noah Warren. Yeah. Uh, it's like the those two defense cores are two of the best as far as uh, depth and quality that I've seen in a long time in the NHL. And both organizations have to really really be uh look forward to the future uh, w- with those blue lines because both uh both have excellent blue lines and it really i mean it's a lot depends i don't, I don't know did you even mention jamie drysdale he was top five yeah i pick. did i did yeah Drysdale's okay for sure, he, for sure. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of the wild he's kind of the wild card like i mean he missed just about all the last season mm-hmm. uh, and partly i think uh depends there's a bit of unknown with him or uh or uh, I think I may have leaned towards Anaheim's. They're that close, the two, the two groups, I, I, as far as depth and quality goes. Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, it, as far as I'm concerned, those two stand above every other one. And uh, Detroit mm-hmm. is a close third. They got Polika, Wallander, uh, Cider. Um, you know, they've got sort of uh, Yeah. They've got a really, really solid group as well. That that's fairly deep. Uh, they just drafted Andrew Gibson out of in the second round. They they've had a, like Montreal. They've had a lot of top ninety picks in the last five years. Yeah, and Anaheim too. And I mean, that's how you get the depth. You gotta have the picks, and uh, majority of them are like a, Montreal has seven top one hundred picks that were defensemen. That's how you. That's how you get the depth. Uh, you know, lots of picks, and for all of Ber- Bergevin's foibles, uh, you, you got to give him credit for the last three, or, three or four years uh, collecting a lot of draft picks, and 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 uh, him and Timmins uh, and uh, Lapointe and company had 
had some pretty solid drafts and we're they're starting to bear fruit of that now mm -hmm. yeah big time big time um so as you know you and i talk about prospects and and the discourse currently going on in social media really irks you and i because it's it's a lot of impatience it's a lot of oh we should have done this oh they should have done that it's like okay you know logan cooley scored one really cool goal it has nothing to do like it, it has no correlation with how good he, of a player he will be compared to Slavkovsky. You know, like that discourse is absurd. And and it's been going on for other teams as well, like Quentin Byfield, Alex Turcot in in um in LA, right? Uh Alex Lafrenia, Capo Caco in, in in New York. These are still young players, okay? And and we look back in time, Miko Rantanen spent some time in the AHL before he became the player that he is now. Jack Hughes had like three okay seasons before he broke out and became the player that we know now. Patience, folks, patience. And Grant, you had a fantastic tweet regarding the Logan Cooley Slavkovsky debate. <laughs> and I'll I'll let you read it because it's it's fantastic. Oh, you want me to read it? Okay. Uh, well, if you want to. Sure. Uh, it is by no means the majority of Habs fans, but damn it. Can the bullshit never cease? I guess I was a little worked up for this one. Uh, it's pathetic so, that some Habs, quote, unquote, fans would whine and stomp about the Habs drafting Slavkowski after Cooley scores one pretty goal in the first exhibition game of the year. It's embarrassing. It is. It is. And and, and this, this message applies to every fan base, okay? You, it, it was targeted towards the Habs fans because... You know, they're, they're pretty vocal, but <laughs> don't give up on your prospects, okay? It takes time. We've seen it time and time again. Yeah. Let them develop, and they will become good, okay? We can't just say, like, oh, I should have done this. I oh, scored one goal. This guy stinks. Come on. Yeah, well, I mean, we saw it with, with Reinbacher right after he was picked. He never even uh, played a second in a Habs uniform, and there was already the outrage that well, should have taken somebody else. Well, uh, the rule of thumb is five years. Give it five years before you even start to judge a draft class. Um, and, until that, then it's uh, because prospects develop at different, you know, and especially European ones. They take mm -hmm. time. They have to adjust to uh, culture. They have to adjust to, I to different sized That's ice. Crazy. You cannot name many European teenagers that came over and and dominated. Like it takes them till they're you know nineteen twenty to to start to really uh, you know even scratch a surface of of their potential. So Slavkowski, it's going to take time. Um, I mean, I think we already saw just in his first exhibition game, but from the moment the puck dropped till the end, that he was already more comfortable and he looked more comfortable than he did for a lot of last year. So, <laughs> you know, um, it, it's five years before you really start to, I always look back at the Max Pacioretty uh, as a great example as a Habs fans. When he, uh, he was struggling in his first year in Montreal. I think he was 19 or 20 and, you know, he played a bit, but it was the next year where he had a little bit of a struggle and he was still like 20 years old and uh, he got sent down to the AHL. And meanwhile, David Perron, um, who was a year older when he was drafted, um, he, he was lighting it up in St. Louis. So Hab fans on message boards were just ripping the Canadians <laughs> all passed on. The, and of course, the French Canadian angle, ah, too, right? There you go. Passed on the Q guy to pick another American because at the time Montreal had, you know, they had picked a few Americans, at college guys. And it was just, oh, why do they love uh, college guys? And the Pacioretty is going to be a bust and Perron is going to be a superstar and Five years later, Perron was struggling and Pacioretty was a 39, you know, 35 plus goal scorer every year. And it looked like, well, geez, uh, you know, I remember saying, so you, you feel a little, uh, 
you feel a little, uh, uh, you know, stupid about the, your tweets or, or your text messages or not text messages. What was it? Mm -hmm. Forum messages, whatever message board uh, posts about, uh, you know, Pacioretty being a bust and Perron being a star. And then it's funny, yet you look back at it the last three or four years again, it swung back the other way where Perron, yeah. Perron has been better than Pacioretty. He didn't have the injuries, uh, all that stuff. So now you could say again, 15 years in, uh, after they were drafted or close to it, whatever it was, that uh, Perron was as good a pick as Pacioretty, but either one was fine. Yeah. The thing that you, you had to you had to be patient. I mean, Pacioretty was 20 years old. He's adapting to the uh, he's adapting to the pro level, and uh, he needed time. A big kid, typically a, a six three plus player, needs uh, needs a little extra time to get used to the pace, the quickness of the NHL, yeah. because it's the fastest league in the it, in the world, and. Um, uh, taller guys typically need to fill out, need to get a little more coordinated, and it takes a year or two more. So considering that Slavkovsky's 230 pounds, considering he's coming from Europe, considering he's 19 years of age, don't be expecting a superstar this year. Um, expect progression. Expect him to just keep getting better and um be patient it might be a year or two before we start to really see his full potential but there's a lot of potential there he's uh, exactly. he's an exciting prospect for sure mm -hmm. that's it and, and not every prospect develops at the same pace maybe cooley develops faster than slavkovsky but at the end of their careers we'll look back and say ah slav was ah. the better player so it, again the like you said i think the five the first five years is like is, is leeway essentially like you, you let them develop. And then after that, you can say, okay, well, you know, maybe this didn't turn out so well, or maybe this was the right pick. It's way too soon. Right. And and there's also the, the body factor, right? At 18, 19, you're still growing. You're still developing. You're, you're finding yourself. So the, these are teenagers, <laughs> you know, they're playing against grown men and they're still like developing it. Anyways, it's it's absurd. Um, it really bothers me, but we'll move on from that uh, before I get too red. Uh, jumping into the Habs prospect of the week, you've already mentioned him in your defenseman list. Mr. Adam Engstrom, 2022 third round pick, 92nd overall. Let's look at some footage. Yeah, I had... Uh... He had a golden assist. Uh, he start, you know, starting to uh, produce there. The first couple of games, I don't think he he got on the score sheet. But I got looking, uh, and there was one game in particular uh, against Arebro. Arebro here, I took a few clips and just demonstrates how uh, poised he is with the puck, uh, and how, how much his skating has improved since he uh, since he was drafted. Uh, that seemed to be the knock with some people was, well, he has to get better. He has to get more mobile and quicker. And I mean, we've seen that uh, he's improved by leaps and bounds, his, uh, his skating. Um, these are, I mean, <laughs> you know, he has no issue whatsoever jumping up in the play. Here's a beautiful outlet pass right on the tape. Um, his outlet passes are outstanding. His one-on-one -on -one defending it, as we, as you'll see on this uh, this clip here, textbook. Um, he's got very good lateral agility. He uh, excellent gap control. There's another outlet pass right on the tape. But uh, there there's an example of his. Um, he's got a very nice uh, uh, ability to to put the puck right on the tape for the guy uh, for the one timer on at the edge power play there he joined the rush and you, you got in a he's not afraid to join the rush because he's i think he's confident with his skating here's here he turned it over and he can, comes back check this out lifts the stick right at <laughs> right at the end there so uh um skating 
he's all, he's an above average skater now at the SHL level. And that's, uh, that's for a kid that's, you know, uh, just turned 20 or 21. So, um, very, very encouraged by his all around game, his all around improvement, uh, especially when it comes to his skating. Um, and here's the two points that he got. There was a, a good point shot and here's another one and it almost thought that he'd scored two goals, but apparently that one was tipped. Mm -hmm. So he had a goal and assist in a recent game. Uh, the highlights that I just showed you were, he didn't get any points, but solid both ways. Uh, very poised, confident. It, you have to be impressed. It, him and Reinbacher and Gooley, the three of them, for their age, how poised and mature they are, uh, all three just look like uh, they're, they're going to adapt to the NHL seamlessly. So mm -hmm. um, we only had one exhibition game, so I, I'm holding off on the, uh, you know, all the prospects that are playing um, that are still in Habs camp right now. Uh, but Engstrom's the one that was playing regularly and he had three solid games in the last week. So we, we gave the, uh, the nod to Engstrom as the prospect of the week. Very, very nice. Adam Engstrom Habs prospect of the week. Now riser of the week. I'll let you handle the pronunciation with, with this guy. Cause <laughs> I'm, oh. I don't feel comfortable uh, diving into that water. I was hoping, uh, uh, and what and which uh, which guy is that? Come on, tell Langus. me. <laughs> Langus. Hey? <laughs> I don't know if it's Nace or Nachi uh, Nace Langus. Is oh, that, that was the easy one. That was the easy one. Jeez, I so didn't it realize. is Nace. Nace Langus. Okay, okay. That's like I don't I, I don't know. I, I have no idea if that's how. It, isn't that the coolest name? If that's Very how you nice. pronounce it. Yeah. If if that is yeah. That is nice. Nice Langus. <laughs> <laughs> it rolls off the tongue. Like, I, I, yeah, yeah, it's cool. Yeah. It's cool. Well, he's uh, he's from the land of Mel Melania Trump and Anze Kopitar, Slovenian. Um, he uh, okay. He was eligible last year for the draft, but he's kind of come out of nowhere. Uh, check out the wheels on this kid. He's six mm. one, um, but he can. Uh, he can really wheel. Um, he's uh, playing Swedish junior for Oscarham this year, and he um, <laughs> uh, he's got eight goals in ten games. So he's leading he's leading all Swedish junior in in goal scoring. Um, last year in forty nine games he scored five goals. This huh. year in ten games he has eight. So what uh, safe to say? that he's uh he's blossoming this year mm -hmm. and uh I, I did a little digging and he he came over and he played for the don mills flyers in midget so i got a hold of one of their coaches from 2019-20 uh, and i'm gonna give him a call after our podcast here to have a chat about him because be interested in just to get a little background on what he thought of him but obviously he's uh he's really improved since uh uh, in the past year, I guess he, yeah. he must have had a great off season because his skating is uh, is above average, uh, definitely at at the Swedish junior level. Um, he's got a decent shot. What I was impressed with, I mean, he's got eight goals this year, but his uh, playmaking there there had to be about six instances in this game where he made just excellent passes. There there's a wow. there's an idea of his hands. Um, there's a nice tip right in front. So he's got good, he's got good eye hand coordination. Um, but, uh, here, here he gets in behind the, the defense and almost scored again, but he, um, I, I watched, I looked at all of his goals and I looked at, uh, this game and got highlights and you can just see that like he's creating, <laughs> he's creating chances, uh, constantly um so he's full marks for his uh eight goals to start the season to lead all all sweet uh all players in swedish junior in goal scoring um mm -hmm. december 
2004. So last year was his was his first year eligibility. So he he'll have another year of eligibility too. So, um, but I think uh, if he keeps playing and producing like he is uh, this year, good size, really good skater, uh, smart. Um, he, he's taken a fair number of draws. He probably takes about five or six a game on average, and he's he's averaging seventy percent on his faceoffs. So he's a decent faceoff guy too. So. Mm -hmm. What I saw there, he, he plays all three forward positions. Uh, there's some uh, versatility there as well. Um, again, uh, from Slovenia, grew up playing hockey in Slovenia, and you make a jump like that. That always impresses me where you, uh, that I think this kid, um, th there's more improvement to come. And if he keeps, uh, he keeps getting faster, stronger, uh, very uh, very intriguing prospect, and I'm gonna I'm gonna add him to my draft list, and um, and um, probably mid mid to late rounds somewhere in there, and we'll yeah. see if uh, NHL guys start. Uh, I'm gonna send some clips to a couple of friends that I have that that scout and and get their feedback and see if uh, if they think that he's he's a draft. Uh, he looks like it now. He keeps it up. He'll be. Uh, who knows? He might end up being some a guy that goes in the middle rounds. So um, for me, that's uh, that guy's a riser for sure. So mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep an eye on him the rest of the year. Yeah, interesting name to to keep an eye on. Interesting name to begin with, Nace <laughs> Langus. Um, it's just fun to say. I <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so usually we have like a sleeper of the week or something. This week you wanted to highlight a performance in particular by Santeri Huovila. Talk to us about this one because it's it's crazy. It's a completely absurd. Yeah. Well, geez, you're better at you know. I thought this was a name that you were you wanted me to pronounce. So uh, <laughs> you had me. Uh, that's where you had me confused because. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, he had a Santeri had a <laughs> a nine point game, and I mean, I you, you, <laughs> that's crazy. Uh, I mean, you can see the the team that they're playing against. These guys are pylons. Yeah, <laughs> like they weren't they, they weren't very good. So I mean, I I couldn't call I couldn't give him the nod for player of the week, prospect of the week because mm -hmm. he's not going on my. I mean, he's he's uh, two thousand four. He's five eleven. He's not. It's not going to be on, on my draft list. But I mean. Eight assists. You got to give the kid a nod for uh, performance of the week, and you just see them here. He was just setting guys up left okay. and right. He, uh, I mean, they stopped celebrating after a while. There, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I would imagine like they won the game like eleven one or something like that. But um, he just uh, there was his one goal. But um, yeah, playmaking machine in this in this contest. Jeez. I can't recall too many junior games where uh, where a kid got eight assists. I mean, yeah. it's rare air. I remember uh, Lafleur. Lafleur played on a on a super line there with uh, Andre Savard, and I think you know that Savard had nine assists or something one game. But it's eight assists in a game. It it's rare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, outside of uh, midget hockey or whatever, but there you just saw he just, you know, uh, the, the the guys on the ESPU there had, had given up by this point, and they were just kind of standing around. Here's a here's a nice one, and then ding. So, I mean, I might have got three or four assists in that game, with, with <laughs> that's guy, but. Yeah. I mean, Still, it, you know, assists. Yeah. it's notable. <laughs> and, uh, I thought I'd, uh, you know, give the, give the kid a nod. I mean, it's, uh, Hey, it, it, it's a heck of an achievement. Even, uh, even if the other team was kind of mailed it in there after the first period. So good for That's him. Cool. And, uh, and, um, you know, hopefully, hopefully he has a few more like that. And may, uh, I mean, the uh, the men's team had to take notice, you know. 
kid gets eight assists, I imagine he'll get a call up there pretty soon to the uh, to yeah. the Liga to have a look because he's pretty skilled and, and obviously obviously a good playmaker. So good for him. That's it. If, if, regardless of you know the strength of the other team, getting nine points in one game is is a remarkable feat. So it was worth highlighting on the oh, show. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A prospect of the week. Now this guy is is most likely a lock in top 10 for this this year's draft. And we've talked about him. We actually dedicated almost an entire show because we had his GM on the show, and that is Berkeley Catton, prospect of the week. Well, yeah, he got to give it to him again. Mm -hmm. First two games of the season. Um, and he uh, – two goals, four assists. They scored nine goals, and he was in on six of them. Wow. Uh, including, I mean, in the, uh, he had four points in a five, four win, you know, that's, I mean, Jeez. that's pretty impressive, you know, <laughs> and, uh, but you could just see just by the, he got the goal on that one, but he, I mm -hmm. mean, he made the play beforehand too, but his, uh, puck possession skills and vision are just top of the draft. He, he's just, uh, so smart and so skilled with the puck. It's uh, it's fun to see him. Oh, he looks like he wow. got. Yeah, yeah. You can just see here. Look at the uh, the vision, and then it's mm -hmm. funny when he made that pass. It's like he's okay. I can, I can uh, take the rest of the, this shift off because he's going <laughs> to score. You know, he just um, he finds the wheelhouse for guys to, and, and always the guy like his peripheral vision is. is fantastic he spots guys they're almost uh parallel to him so um he's uh i mean it what can you say uh the summertime he was fantastic uh exhibition season averaging three points a game start this year uh start the year off six points in in two games so i mean if he keeps this up he'll be I, I think I have him sixth or whatever, but he'll move into the top five because uh, how can you not how can you not be impressed by just how dominant he is in his draft in his draft eligible year? Love the that's kid. It. Yeah, consistently great so far. That's that's what's standing out to me. He's just like he doesn't take a game off. It's it's quite impressive. And those jerseys seem pretty familiar. So we know we know what he would, would look like in the <laughs> in the red, white, and blue. Uh, gives gives Habs fans maybe something to dream about. Um, that about wraps it up for this week's show. Obviously, we encourage you all to subscribe, like, and comment to uh, help the algorithm. You know, tell tell YouTube that to pump up this show, right? Um, and also, you can't miss you can't forget to subscribe to Recruits.ca. Let's bring up the rates. Um, so for Canadians coverage. Everything Habs related, two forty nine a month. That's a bargain, right? NHL draft coverage. If you want more of what this show can offer, one ninety nine a month, a steal. And then both together is three ninety nine a month. There's there's no that, way you shouldn't get this. That's uh, that's Canadian too, right? So that's it. I mean, uh, if you're in the U.S. or you want to <laughs> even cheaper, you, you want to try Canadians coverage. Uh, I did the uh, conversion the other day, and it's a buck eighty-five, I think, a month. So I don't know. You, you can't get a in Canada, anyways. You can't get a Timmy's uh, extra large <laughs> double double for that price yeah, there. Yeah. Some places, so uh, certainly can't get a French vanilla, anyways. So no, skip no. one of those uh, a month and uh, get uh, you know get all. Get all our great Habs coverage um, exactly. and draft coverage. I'm going to be posting. Uh, I've been putting a bunch of videos in the bank. Um, like I probably have 50, 60 that I will be posting over the next month um, already done. That uh, it's going to be two or three a day um, where I I get clips from a, from a specific game. And I'll be doing it for the Habs prospects once they get rolling here. Uh, full time, um, where I I go over the notable plays, get clips from Instat, which is a great resource, and and an, I'll be posting them on the on the website. Last year, I uh, posted a lot of them on YouTube just to give people an idea of what 
what we're doing as far as uh, video scouting goes. But this year, they'll be exclusive to the site. But at, at the price that uh, that we're charging, I think you're going to, you know, you're going to be more than satisfied with the coverage that, that we're going to uh, be providing. There you go. Inflation does not affect recruits. All right. <laughs> the, the price stays the same and it stays good. Great value. Great bang for your buck. Um, as always, we thank you for tuning in and supporting the show. Grant, thank you as always. And we will see you all next Wednesday. Take care. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.